guys, welcome to Bavastock family. Today we have something different guys, it's not any pranks, it's serious. Um, I am 90% a joker and that 10% I am very serious. Today guys, this is cancer and we have B with us today and she is a cancer survivor guys. Yeah, so um, I was diagnosed in 2016, March. Um, I've been in remission now for almost two and a half years, which means I'm completely cancer free. Put it there, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so um, yeah, it was quite a rare type of cancer. It's called a urine sarcoma. It's more common in males than it is females, and they don't really know a lot about it. So um, yeah, it went misdiagnosed for a long time. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me until it got to the point where the tumour had eaten away at my bone mm -hmm. and basically my whole femur snapped so my whole thigh bone just snapped in two. So how did it snap? Did it just like... Um, I was putting my socks on in the morning and I was stood on this leg and I just had a biopsy done so it took a little bit of it out to mm. test it and that. So I stood on this foot, this one just snapped like clean, I heard it snap and everything. Wow. Yeah, it's nasty. Oh, wow. <laughs> so... It's quite a journey. A long journey, but she's here. Look how healthy and well she looks. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm lucky. Very lucky, and not everyone is so lucky, as you know, guys. Um, Tanisha, she had cancer. Um, she didn't, you know, she didn't. She didn't have chance to fight it. Um, as you guys know, or anyone that's new watching, um, Tanisha. Well, we're not, I'm not sure how she died that day, as I can't register her death, and um, I don't know what the cause of death was, so her death is going to inquest, but I know that she had cancer, um, and 17 hours after we was told, she was gone, and that's all I know, guys, literally, that's all I know, um, but on a good note, that anybody out there that has had cancer and beaten it, um, you know, it's you know, it's a blessing. Cancer's not always, you know, doom and gloom. I mean, if you have it, but it can be treatable and you can survive it. We have the living proof. And look how healthy she looks. <laughs> and um, so, you lost your hair. Yeah. I lost all my hair, I had it cut really short first and then it just started falling out in clumps like everywhere, it was just like all over the place and my mum was like we got to do this because I was just getting depressed about it so shaved it all off and I'm not going to lie like at first it was horrible like I mean I used to be able to sit on my hair like going from that to being bald, mm. it was horrible but then like you just wake up and you think do you know what, this is happening, you just got to let it happen, there's no point stressing over it mm. and I just rocked my bald head, I loved it. I'm gonna, miss it all the time. I'm gonna put some pictures up, guys, so you can see how beautiful with her bold head. Thank you. I'm gonna put them up now. <laughs> was your first thought my hair within seven days i was in hospital and i didn't really have a lot of time to think about anything let alone wow. my hair literally like one day i was at school the next day i was in a bed and couldn't move like it was just it was mad it was crazy it just all happened so quickly like you didn't really mm. have time to think about it when did you start having the chemo so i was bed bound because mm. they couldn't fix the break in my leg so because they couldn't fix the break, they couldn't stabilise me to have the scans that I needed to have. So I've never, I never had those. And then they just kind of went out on a whim and decided that I'd have uh, two lots of chemotherapy uh, every fortnight. So mm. I was doing six days on, six days off, two days on, 14 days off. Right. And that started about, I'm not sure, I think it was about six weeks mm. into me being in the hospital. Right. So yeah, and then... I did that till September time, I was doing that, and then from September to about 
So in September, and then I did six weeks of radiotherapy. Right. And then on the 2nd of November, I went in for my op because the chemo wasn't killing the cancer that was in the bone. It only killed the cancer surrounding the bone in the soft tissue. Right, okay. So they had to remove the whole bone, replace it with titanium. So I've got a metal pin in my knee, and then my femur's titanium, and my hips titanium too. So guys, she has like a metal, like a... I've got a photo of that as well that we'll put up to. What, like, like a, a skull? So what yeah. is it, like a rod or...? Yeah, 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 it's just like a, it's like a prosthetic bone, but right. instead of it being like a prosthetic leg on the outside, it's on the inside, so it's just basically replacing the bone I have. But I've got x-rays in that now. So to yeah, help the cool. guys understand, yeah. so the cancer was eating away at the bone? Yeah, so it started off in the bone and as it started obviously breaking up the bone to form like the cells they reproduce and they form in that and it started eating away at the bone and then coming out into the tissue and the muscle around it. So I don't have a lot of muscle in this leg anymore either. Right. So guys, that's just... It's just incredible, and the cancer is rare, you say? Yeah, it's quite a bad type of cancer. Yeah. What's it called again? It's a Ewing's sarcoma. So there's two types of sarcoma, the osteosarcoma and the Ewing's. Osteo is slightly less rare, more common a little bit, mm. but um, Ewing's is quite rare, yeah. Did it spread anywhere, or did it just stay in that no, kind of leg area? No, because with Ewing's, if it spreads, it spreads straight to your lungs. Really? Yeah, that's the most likely place for it to spread, wow. and once it's there, it's game over, basically. Right, right. So for anybody watching that's going through chemo or knows anybody that's going through chemo, how would you, you know, for losing your hair side of it? The reason why I keep hitting onto this subject it's is because, because it's a hard, it's a hard, no, I understand. When Tanisha um, died, well, before she died, when she was told um, she had cancer, her, the first thing she said to me was, Mum, I don't want to lose my hair. So... You know. First of all, right, so not all types of chemotherapy make you lose your hair to start with. Mm. Secondly, there's things you can use to prevent hair loss, such as cold caps, which I chose against because I didn't really want something cold on my head whilst my leg was broken in a hospital bed all day, every day. I'd rather mm. just... Mm. Thirdly, you're going to be beautiful no matter what. You don't need your hair to define who you are. It's not mm -hmm. at all a part of your personality, yeah, it looks nice, yeah, you can do things with it, and I missed plaiting my hair and that, like, but mm. you are more than your hair, mm. and mm. it doesn't matter in the, like, grand scheme of things, mm. as long as you're here, you shouldn't, like, I'm not saying don't care about it, because you are going to care about it, of as course. a female, of course, you're, you're it's part of your identity, but, but I think, once you get to a point where you come to terms with what's happening to you, mm it puts a lot of things into perspective. Of course, of course. You don't really care about it. And guys, if you can walk out with your bald head, you know, that's you saying, I'm brave, I'm proud, I'm gonna beat this, and you know, you're a warrior. Now, then people that wanna laugh or look or do this or do that, they're the people that don't understand, for one. For never two, been never been through it. Three, wouldn't even be able to do that their self. So, you know. So when, you know, you see somebody that has cancer with their bald head, I'm like, you know what, fair play. It's tough, man, though, because people stare, people, like, you get kids. Like, mm. I know kids don't have a filter, but you get kids coming up to you and asking you, well, why are you bald? Mm -hmm. Or, like, one I had was, is that a boy or a girl? Mm -hmm. Like, people would ask me that. And then on top of that, I was in a wheelchair, and it was just, like, people staring all the time. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're that ill it puts into perspective that mm. like, you don't care about anything else. Of course, so. of course. And people only stare because they don't understand. Yeah. Or they're Agreed. low of it. But I'd rather people just... I remember one time there was this girl and she was asking her mum, why has that girl got no hair? Mm. And my mum overheard and she said, you can come and ask her if you like. And mm. this girl came over and I explained to her it was my magic medicine, like it's making me better, but my hair thins out because of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Just stuff that... I'd rather people just came and spoke to me about it rather than stare and give me weird looks and yeah this is it so how long say so it's been two years so how often do you have to go back to the hospital so i have to have ecgs which are heart checkups because like as we're ra raising awareness like 60 percent of survivors of childhood cancer end mm. up with long-term problems such mm. as infertility heart failure and secondary cancers because chemo causes them mm. And um, so I have to have my heart checked. I am with an endocrinology department, which is basically to do with 
like having babies and my fertility and stuff like that. I have to have my lungs x-rayed because that's the most likely place for it to come back. And then mm. obviously just like routine checkups on the metal work, whether it's deteriorating, whether my bones holding together with the metal, just stuff like that, just checking up, making sure I'm all good. So the sad story is guys, um, B has been left infertile and not everybody realizes when you have chemo, it kills off your eggs and everything else. Yeah. It's just one of it. Thankfully, they did take one of my ovaries out and froze it. So I've got, mm. um, and I donated loads of eggs as well to research. And oh, did you? Yeah, wow. Things like that. So I had loads. I donated mm. like half of them. Mm, mm. But I still got like 150. <laughs> <laughs> Rock on. <laughs> right, guys. Um, I just want to say one thing about Tanisha. Tanisha. You would have been her inspiration. You would have been 100%. And um, B has never met Tanisha. And you really would have been such an inspiration to her. And if she did manage to stay alive to fight it and she met you, you would have helped her through it so much. Even the process of, um, you know, her losing her head. Because that was a big thing for her. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, so you would have been. I have Tanisha. Guys, here, you know, and she literally, you would have been her inspiration, so, you know, she's in here and, you know, you're just so you're lucky, you're I'm very, so very lucky, she's so lucky guys, and anybody that has been through cancer or knows anybody that survived it or died from it or, you know, comment below guys and let me know your story. But you know, sadly, Tanisha wasn't able to. But she's an angel in heaven, so. 100%, the best little angel. I just want to get this um, awareness out there, guys, for everybody. You know, just if you have a cough or aches yeah. or. Just make sure you press it on at people because there's too many children dying or something. I mean, childhood cancer is the second most common thing that kills children under the age of 19. And that's like after accidents and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a big number of children that are dying from childhood cancer. And it's not, I wouldn't say underfunded, but the way that they're funding the research, the research hasn't been, so how do I put this? In 50 years, the way that they treat childhood cancer hasn't changed. And it's not working. It's not. Because out of the, what, 10 people, let's say, that I've met along the process of my journey there's like three of us left just you know it's sad man because it's something so important and it feels like people aren't putting their all into trying to figure out how to solve this problem and i know it's an illness and it happens and whatever but you would think that in 50 years if it's not working something would have changed so guys, this video is for awareness, so please share, like, comment, subscribe, and um, thank you to B for... Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And um, yes, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope you've, you know, learned something, um, or even if you go away and you can give some advice to somebody... Um, if they're worried about, you know, going through chemo or losing their hair or becoming infertile or, you know, just stuff like that. And also just educating people because um, B was telling me some people were saying that she was pregnant and when they know that she's had cancer. Yeah. And this is just where people are not very educated on the whole yeah, 100%. chemo. So, you know... We need to keep everybody educated. But it's good to learn new things. Definitely is, but guys, she's absolutely stunning. Look Thank at her. You, stop it. you really are. Bless her. So take care, guys, and God bless.